Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig uh, uh, tutorial, and on this one we are going to talk about something very basic, uh, but it's something that you should know, and not all people know this, uh, because again, not every uh, people read the manual, and that's fine, you know? That's why I'm here, that's why I'm making this video, so you can have a, you know, an easy, uh, an easy learning without going reading the manual, which sucks, by the way, but that's fine. So, okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about these sections at the bottom why you get them and why you would want to use them. So most of the times when we work, uh, we use the arrange view, which is this one, uh, with Eclipse, which is this one, and then we use this view, which is the device panel. Every time we go to a, a channel or a track, we just get the devices that we are using, you know, the plugins and everything else. This is what we use most of the times. Then sometimes when we need to do automation, we click right here and it's going to go and show us the automation. And we have this tiny space to do the automation. So uh, the problem is that there is a better way. And this is the better way, the one we have right here on the bottom. So, okay. So first of all, let's, let's cover this ones, and then we're going to talk about this ones. So uh, right now, again, we are in the device view and this one is the device view. Now, let's say that you want to check for different things when you're standing on the channel, you can easily swap different things right here at the bottom you don't need to go right here click and double click and you know you don't need to do that so for example let's say on the on this on this uh you know midi clip i want to do some editing i'm going to need to double click and then of course i'm going to get the view that i want now of course what you can do when you when you have the clicks uh, the clip selected you can go to this view which is going to be the uh, note uh view and you can edit that clip, the one that you selected, which is pretty much nothing. Let me just go to something more useful, like the base. Um, and you can edit that clip, or you can uh, have access to the whole track. So right here, you can modify and alter everything that you want uh, for the whole track. So it's just much useful, and you have a lot of space. You don't need to go and scroll on, you know, on a tiny space like this. You, know, you just get it right away. Same thing with the automation. I'm going to go to the ABL3. So on this one, I have a lot of automation. So doing the automation of this tiny space really, really sucks, right? It just sucks. So what you can do, you can go to the automation view. And this one, it will give you a much bigger reference of whatever it is that you're doing right here. So for example, if you click there, you can go and right here is going to give you a reference of what, what I'm doing. You know, that's the dry and wet from the SAM. That's the uh, on and off for the uh, shape box and the on and off for the other filter Sam and so on and so on and so on. It's just a much better place to work with, you know, uh, to work. So that's the, the automation option you get right here. And of course, you get the device panel. We already know this one. And at the same time, if you want to do a little bit of, uh, you know, checking uh, your mix, your different uh, channels all at once, you can go to the mix and check them right here. That's, again, the whole point. So now, again, you have a, a much easier uh, uh, workflow. Now, then you get the other ones, the arrange, the mix, and the edit, and these ones are completely different. Now, if you want to do some heavy uh, editing, for example, on the bass, and uh, you know, of course, you can go right here and you get the, t the this is spot, but maybe it's just too small and you need to do a lot of uh, editing at the same time, right? So what you can do, you can switch and you can actually go and do tap with the with your keyboard. It's going to change to the arrange and mix. Now, if you go to the edit, you're going to get all at once. You get all the notes so you can do the editing. You can go right here and edit, uh, you know, the velocity and the pressure and everything else. Again, you can just mix it, make it bigger, make it smaller. Or you can go right here and just check your auto automation. Now, of course, I don't have automation on that one. I'm going to go to this one. And on this one, I have automation. You know, and you can just, you know, change uh, edit the notes or whatever it is that you need to do. And quickly, you know, uh, just edit the automation. And still, you can do clip or you can do track if you wish. But you have a big dedicated space to do the heavy editing. And again, it's just, this is speeds your workflow whenever you want to do something. You don't have to do it on the arrange on a very tiny space. You just quickly go here and do it here, right? Much better. Then you have the arrange view, which is what we've been using the whole time. And that's fine. You know, if you still want to do here, that's fine. But now you know that you have a very uh, much better dedicated space to do this. 
And then you have the mix. And this is a little bit different. Now, you also get a mix right here at the bottom. But, you know, it's just too small. And uh, it's just too small. For me, it's just too small. I never use it because it's just too small. But you have easy, uneasy access to this one. Now, you have a big as dedicated section for this. Now, uh, this one, of course, you can have access to your groups right here. And this ones are the clips. You don't see the arrangement. You don't see this, right? This just lives on the arrangement. So when you go to the mix, you just have access to the clips, which is going to be uh, this clips. And let me just show you what I got right here. You know, this is just for fun. Um, I'm going to go and open the tracks. Now, whenever I make tracks, I don't really use the, uh, the clip. Uh, what I do for the clip uh, on the clip view, uh, I just use uh, use it just to create an idea, just to create kind of a, the eight bar loop. And then when I have something that I say, okay, you know, on this sounds cool, I'm gonna take it to the arrangement view, and I just do the whole thing. For example, I got something like this, right? Let me just lower the volume. And this is, you know, how the idea started, and then you just you go to the next. And the next, and you just, you know, you just keep adding things. Okay, but that's the clip, that, that, that's the clip view, right? Where you can just manage your scenes, and then you have the arranger, right? So when you go to the mix, what you get is the view for the clip view. You don't have the arrange view. And that's, you know, kind of a part of the problem. But, you know, if you like to work with Eclipse, uh, you just can trigger your scenes right here and just manage them from here. Right? This is like your place if you really like to use uh, scenes. You know, the clip view. Now, at the same time here, at the same, let me just lower the volume. At the same time, right here, while you're managing your your clips and your scenes and everything else, you get again a view for the mixing, so you can easily just mix your different tracks, which is really really cool. Now, of course, right now I'm in group mode; everything is kind of a close. But if you open them, you know you're just gonna be able to uh, maybe just you know adjust your kicks, your claps, whatever. At the same time, you get a view just to do with the send and everything else. But this is not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is that this view can be very small or it can be very uh, kind of a informative. You know, it can be very big. And again, maybe you didn't know about this. So right here, if you go all the way to the right and at the bottom, you're going to have some controls right here. And as you click, the, click them off, you know, you, you toggle them off, you're going to get less and less. And this is just pretty much the same track. But you get almost no information. You just get the uh, the faders and, you know, the tracks. Now, as you start bringing more, you're going to get more information and more and more and more and more and more. Right? And notice all the things that you get. Now, I'm going to go and disable them all and just kind of uh, show uh, this to you in a more slow space. So I'm going to go and make a right click right here on this white space. And you get all the same options you get right here, you get them right here. And this is something that you might not know, right? Because, again, not everyone reads the manual. So, you can go, if you uh, want to show the clip, you know, the uh, launcher, you know, the, to manage your scenes and everything else, uh, you have it right there. But maybe you don't work with this, and I actually, I don't work with this on the mixing side of things when I, you know, need to do uh, on this screen. So, I just toggle off. I, don't, I just, just don't need it. But, I use everything else. So. I'm going to see the inputs and outputs because I use a lot of uh, hardware sense or you can show the sense just, you know, to send uh, to your sense. Now, right now, the sense are hidden, so you have an option to show the effect tracks, you know, the sense. So what else? Uh, you get the uh, deactivated channels. If you have a channel that is deactivated, that is right here, shows right here. And maybe you never did this. Uh, let, me just, uh, let me just show you. I'm going to go to arrange. And let's say that you have a track, for example, the side chaining tr the trigger. You decided that you're not going to use it because you're going to use Kickstart or some other plugin. So you're going to go over here and just toggle active. So now the side chain trigger is inactive. Still shows here, but when you go to the mix, uh, is uh, you know it's just going to show there. But maybe it's just 
you know, you don't want to see it. So I'm going to go and hide it. Yeah. How easy. Now, of course, I am using that track and actually it's very important. So I'm going to go and just bring it. So let me toggle active. There we go. So, of course, you get a lot of things that, you know, you could really use. For example, in my case, I use the scents. I use the faders. And something I really, really use is the panels, right? The device panels, right? Here, you can easily access to my plugins and just control all the different plugins and, and everything else I'm doing just because it's very important to me. Now, the most important thing I get or I use is going to be the meters. And this is again because uh, I do the mixing right here. So when I do, a, you know, when I play something, I can easily see how much I'm doing of everything. It's a much, you know, easier way of of mixing. Because what what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go to the arrange and just do this on this tiny, you know, tiny little fader, tiny little, you know, meters? It's just really hard. Right here, it's just much better. So when you're mixing, this is just a much better place. Now at the same time, you can just you can say large clip height, and it's because you need the clip. So if you want to get the clip view, you can still get it with the faders, with the devices, with the scents. And again, if you want to make space, you just uh, remove whatever it is that you don't want. Maybe you don't want the effect tracks and you don't want to see your... And uh, you can act actually handle it from here. You can uh, remove that or you can remove that and you have a little bit more space. You can still see your clip launcher, your faders, your meters and your, uh, you know, your plugins. Super awesome, right? So maybe you didn't know about this. Not all people, again, read the manual. So now, of course, when you're mixing your tracks, you have a much better space to do the mixing and not just use the orange view, all right? So, okay, so that's it, you know? That's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the video. So hopefully you find this useful and this is like kind of a, you know, uh, something, something you didn't know and now you say, oh man, I didn't know about this now, I'm gonna use it. Oh, and there's one, one more thing I didn't show you. Uh, but again, this is more for live performance. Uh, I talked about this on a different video uh, when I talked about the globals modulator. Maybe you should go and check how the globals work. You get the crossfades. So some instruments can be on the A side and some others on the B side. And right here you get the crossfade and you can just crossfade to A and crossfade to B. This is again uh, suited for live performances. When you're you know, you know playing uh, maybe uh, some sound, and you want to, and you're playing something else on the other side, and you want to crossfade from one thing, from one sound to the other one, well, this is going to be your thing. In this case, uh, since I use Bitwig for producing Not For Life, uh, I just don't, don't give a shit about this. But that's fine, you know, maybe you do. So, okay, so that's it. Hopefully you like the video, you uh, find this useful. Remember, of course, to like and subscribe, because if you don't like and you don't subscribe, how would I know that this is useful? And I just... Not, I'm not going to do any more of this video. So I'm going to do something else. So see you on the next one.